to a program are usually Tuesday nights. Oh. <laughs> um, but Friday night is the slowest. Is it? <laughs> now, right. are you, do you teach? No, I'm actually taking, finish up a master's program in oh. four weeks. Well, actually three and a half now. So wow. I'm doing my final project. Um, nice. So, but I ended up having to take two this term. And so it was real intense, but Larry and Melissa worked with me very well. I work early in the morning and late at night, which gives me all day because I'm doing an on-site research project. So it gives me time to go. And my optimal productive time is not at night. Yeah. And so it's getting off, not able to function. And so. Well, that I, explains why I haven't seen you that much. Yeah. Eight to 11 and I come back seven. So I hit the Australia. 7 right. to 11, but they needed help today. So I came on early. <clears throat> so I won't have to be uh, very, very slow Friday night on. <laughs> Are there Which any I'm Australia sure. classes? Not tonight. Not um, tonight. I think Friday, this is it, I think. Yeah, Friday. I guess they're Saturday morning. They don't get much. Hmm. Is it Saturday? Oh. I need to give you back. I almost forgot. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. If you'd left and left me. <laughs> no, I wasn't leaving, but you got somebody trying to come in. Okay. You're oh, hosting. Okay. They are live. So. All right. Thank you. Sorry about that. And I'm staying for a check-in. So. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, Sherry. How are you doing? Sorry about putting you on the spot there in that last Oh, no, class. no, that's okay. It's fine. It didn't, I thought it was a was good just, time to, to put a plug in, you know? <laughs> I was just kind of surprised. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. She's doing this now. All right. <laughs> it, it's been a busy week. <laughs> I, I bet. <laughs> uh, okay. We have quite a few people signed up, so it'll take a little while to get people in here. Oh, yeah. Hi. Hi, Melinda. Hi, Donna. Hi. Hi, Becky. Good to see you. Hello. And Susan. Hi. Hi, Joy and Julie. Hello. Hello. Are we going to spot those masterpieces tonight? <laughs> Jack, Becky's like, yes, we are. <laughs> All right. Someone has a cat? Oh, no, you can hear my cat. Oh, is, do you have That's a little fine. kitty cat? Oh, I can hear cats 20 miles oh. off. Of me. Oh, okay, there, she's got cat, cat ear. Yeah, I've got seven of them, so so you know you can yeah. tell. I was just um, glad it was somebody else's cat. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Hopefully, people will be able to get in. We've been having Sharon. You, I don't know if you know, we've been having this five o'clock issue. You have. I I've been hearing because it's my eight o'clock. So I've been hearing of your. Yeah, because like and there's I'm the only one on, so it's like I have no idea how to help, but I'm the only one on. But I, I know I've been having an issue at the five o'clock hour. I don't know unless they're I don't know if they're testing or what they're doing. <laughs> but, but we're at four o'clock today. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's true. It is four. That's right. So maybe it won't be bad. The five o'clock first curse we have. The curse, yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> maybe starting an, uh, an hour earlier is better. <laughs> Friday night. I have a quick question. Sure, Julie. The um, movie Notting Hill mm -hmm. with Julia Roberts, there was a picture that she gave to him. Oh. And I don't know if anybody remembers seeing it. I've often wondered, is this, you know, a true piece of art or, you know. Oh, that's a good trivia. Oh, that is. Does anybody know? Hmm. 
I have to go. Back. I would have to uh, stream that to see. What the, what is it? Not, Nottingham. Nottingham with Julia Roberts. Notting Nottingham. Nottingham. There was a movie about. Oh, Notting Hill. Sorry, Hill. Notting Hill. Hill. I think it was was it Notting Hill Gate even maybe. What did, what was the picture? I mean, the, she gave it to somebody. Yeah, she gave it to the the guy she winds up the bookstore owner, the man she falls in love. Oh, with. the bookstore guy. Okay. What's his name? He's very popular. The great bookstore movie okay. is eighty four Charing Cross. Hugh Grant was the. Oh, actor. that's it. Hugh Grant. Yes, yeah, she did a lot of movies with Hugh Grant. Yeah. So it's Notting Hill. Notting Hill, 1999. And the question is, and may, maybe someone will know the answer by the end, is what painting did she hand to the, maybe, the bookstore? Maybe Google would tell you. Oh, that's true. Google might do that. They might I found found it. have that. Is that what you're doing, Sherry? Sherry's, uh, people are hot on it. Becky's on it. Sherry's on it. Uh, Thank you. Oh, is that the yeah. painting? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, it's one? called. It's Looks called like the bride. Chagall. The bride. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mark Chagall. Oh, oh okay. Chagall. Well, okay. that's not like a throwaway piece of art. <laughs> no. Well, oh, there it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The bride. Yeah. There it is. That's, that's definitely Chagall. I would take that one for a present. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty Maybe good. Want to marry her. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's good. Yeah. It, it's been so long. You know, that was a long time, that movie. Yeah. But now that you're mentioning it, I'm kind of thinking, I do remember something about a painting being handed to someone. Yeah. All right. Well, why don't we get going here? Because we have a lot of... I may have to, to leave a little early. I, do, I may have to leave a little early. So if I disappear, that's what happened. Okay, good to know. <laughs> so welcome everyone to get set up. We're seniors teaching seniors about technology, and we also have social hours. Tonight is the art discussion night where we name that masterpiece or try to. Uh, my name is Donna. I'm your guide tonight. Um, been in, I was in the IT industry for over 30 years. I enjoy helping people get over their Perfect. fear of technology. And this, you can get a recording of this session afterwards by emailing help at getsetup.io. And we do not get paid to promote any of these paintings. <laughs> uh, we're going to be uh, doing a little fun game we do in here called Name That Masterpiece, where we're going to try to identify famous artworks, and we're just discussing them as we see them. So does anyone have a favorite artist or masterpiece you like? Any favorites? Uh, Bamir, Diego Rivera. Bamir, you like you like Diego. <laughs> Any others? Vermeer, um, <clears throat> just because of um, how few there are. Yeah, that's true. true. Picasso. Picasso. Uh huh. I like Van Gogh. Van Gogh. I like the French Impressionists a lot. Of mm. Them. Mm. Harry okay. Cassatt, you know, is one of them. I like them. Yeah. Monet. Monet. Well, it's funny you mentioned Impressionism because I found this really lovely video about how to spot the Impressionists and what their uh, artworks like. So I'm going to play that for you so you can enjoy it. And then we'll start identifying our masterpieces. This is John Immervar, and thanks for joining me for a visit to the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Today, we're gonna to talk about Impressionism. The museum has a fabulous collection of Impressionist art, including this Claude Monet picture of the Japanese bridge in his garden. Although Impressionism is very popular, it's sometimes hard to define exactly what it is, but I'm gonna give you a simple definition to get you started. Before I do that, however, we need to talk about the kind of art that the Impressionists were reacting against. Let's start at the Louvre in the late 1800s. Just ignore that pyramid. <laughs> the dominant style in Western art at this time is called academic art because it's approved by the great Royal Academies of Art in the major European countries. Here's an example. It's called Faust and Marguerite. 
painted in the late 1800s, but set in the Middle Ages. The academies love scenes from long ago. We see people in medieval dress outside of a Gothic cathedral. If you were a wealthy patron, you would probably know the story of Faust, a medieval scholar who sold his soul to the devil. And here he is with a red hat, and behind him, the devil, Mephistopheles. They have turned their back on Mary and Jesus, and Mephistopheles is saying to Faust, see that innocent girl coming out of the church? Her name is Marguerite, and I can get her to be your mistress. Academic paintings often have a story that the elite would know. And now look at the style of painting. It is painted with incredible detail. You won't see even a single hint of a brush stroke. These paintings are so smooth, they call them licked. And notice the colors. A famous academic teacher said, a good painting should be like a violin, brown. Look at the detail in the costumes. The artist would probably have put the clothing on a mannequin since no human model would want to hold the pose long enough to get that kind of detail. A group of younger painters broke away from academic art and they adopted a totally different style. One of those painters was Renoir, and here's how he painted a street scene. It couldn't be more different. <laughs> and this kind of art comes to be called Impressionism. And now, here's my working definition based on the letters E-L-B-O-W, elbow. Let's start with E, which stands for scenes of everyday modern life, instead of historical scenes as we saw in Faust and Marguerite. Of course, that means scenes from the late 1800s when the Impressionists were at work. And Renoir's painting is a perfect example. We see Paris in 1875, with all the hustle and bustle of modern life. Here's a guy reading a newspaper. A well-dressed woman is enjoying a stroll with her children. And over here, a nun, who isn't in a cloister anymore, but just walking through the city like everyone else. And look at the buildings. They were brand new in Renoir's day and they're still characteristic of Paris today. We can see those buildings in another modern street scene by another Impressionist, Pissarro. The ground floor with the awnings might have shops with rich people living in apartments on the upper floors and the artists and servants crowded into the hot and stuffy garrets on the top floor. Here's another vibrant street scene of everyday life in Paris, also by Pissarro. Now let's talk about L for light. The Impressionists were fascinated by light and the colors it could capture. For example, look at these poplar trees painted by Monet along a river near his home. There's an S bend in the river here, and you can see the trees follow the curve of the river's edge into the distance. We are looking at modern agribusiness here. These trees were spaced and planted in the regular pattern to be cut down for lumber. But Monet wasn't painting the trees. He was painting the light on the trees. And he did a whole series of these paintings. The museum actually has two of them. He wanted to capture the light at different times of day and in different seasons. The Impressionists were also fascinated by artificial light, as we can see in one of my absolute favorite Impressionist paintings. It's by Mary Cassatt. Here we see a very modern woman in a private box at the opera lit by the artificial light from the chandelier, which has just been lowered into the hall. Can you see that there's a mirror behind her that reflects her hair and mirror from behind? So the people in that balcony are not behind her, but in front of her, reflected in the mirror. And the chandelier we see in the mirror is in front of her also. But wait, look how Cassette is playing with light and reflections. If the chandelier is in front of her, the front of her face should be in the light and the back of her head in the shadows. But Cassatt has the shadow on the front of her face. So this painting is really an exploration of light and reflections. And now for our next letter, B for brush strokes. Instead of those finely crafted, highly detailed brush strokes, the Impressionists favored freer brush strokes that don't capture the detail that we saw in those licked academic paintings. Look at this picture by Monet. Again, it's a busy scene of modern life at a port. Now look at the people. When you actually see people at a distance, you don't see every detail of their faces and clothing. 
you just get, well, an impression. Notice how Monet paints the people with very free brushstrokes that just suggest a person walking with a shadow, but there's no attempt to capture the minute details. Remember that I said that the academic painters worked in the studio, but at this time there was a radical invention that gave us two things, cleaner teeth and impressionism. That's right, those little tubes. Prior to this, artists had to make their colors by hand as they were painting in the studio. But in the late 1800s, chemists developed synthetic colors and found a way to put paint in little tubes. That brings us to O for outdoors. With the new synthetic paint in tubes, they could paint outdoors in direct contact with the things they wanted to paint, not necessarily making sketches and then taking them back to the studio. Look at this painting by Sisley, who captures this winter scene of modern working boats. Sisley emphasizes that he is painting outside with the mooring lines in the painting that suggest he is standing on one of the moored boats. And he painted this in the bitterly cold winter of 1879, as we can see in this print from the Chicago Institute of Art that shows that winter in Paris. You can even see the horses dropping dead from the cold. An artist friend of mine told me that you can see that Sisley mixed his oil paints with thinners so the paint would flow even in the cold weather, and he used that thinned paint to capture the pale look of winter clouds. That's what it means to paint outdoors. And speaking of clouds, let's finish with W for weather and atmosphere. The Impressionists loved the softening effect of clouds, smoke, and mist, as we see in this painting by Pissarro that captures it all for us. It's called The Effect of Fog, and it's a perfect elbow painting. It's a scene of everyday modern life that experiments with light effects, uses freer brushstrokes, seems to have been painted outside, and is totally fascinated with weather and atmosphere. So, elbow. Really, it's just a formula to get you started with enjoying Impressionist paintings. There are as many paintings that don't conform to it as do. But do come to the museum and see for yourself. And thank you for joining me on this visit to the Philadelphia Museum of Art. For a list of paintings and links to the museum. What'd you think of that? Very cool. Very cool. Is that cool? Yeah. yeah I thought it was good. a great mm -hmm. description of things. Yeah, it was well done. Yeah, all right. I'm glad you liked it. Um, all right. Now, oh, I know. Fred, did you, do you, have, did you have any chance to find any pictures from last week? Find any pictures from last oh, week. Well, I was wondering if anyone had any pictures they wanted to stump the group with. Uh, I might find one while you're. Oh, oh you, don't, I mean, you don't have to. I, I was wondering if you had anything ready. All right. Uh, I, but if you get something ready, feel free to yeah, do it. Okay, I can take a quick you want look to. here. And anyone can, really. This is, a, this is a group effort. All right. So I'm going to, uh, let's bring up our first piece of, now this is a fantastic piece of art right here. <laughs> it's, it's art, folks. Who is this? Um. An updated version of Animal Farm. <laughs> uh, it was that. I love the dog with the <laughs> cigar in his mouth. <laughs> it's the poker dogs. The poker dogs, right? But who did this? Does anybody know? Not Norman Rockwell, was it? No, oh, no. Okay, let's see. Oh, cool. Yes, he is cool. A friend, a friend in need. That's the <laughs> doesn't have the date. I guess this was before they changed it to dogs playing poker. Yes. But, uh, oh, it's because he's giving him a card under the table. Oh, yeah. Oh. Look at that. See the foot? <laughs> I must yeah. be missing. Let's see. I'm missing that. Oh, there we it is. saw the card yeah. cheaters last the other day. Yeah, this is, like a, <laughs> this is Sharks. the dog version of card cheaters. Look at him. Yeah, he's passing the card over to his yeah. buddy there. Friend in need. Friend in need. <laughs> It's, it's such an iconic uh, painting, too. Yeah. I love the impression of painting behind them. Oh, yeah. Who's yeah. that behind him? Yeah, there we go. Let's identify the painting in the painting. 
It does look like something that's impressionist, doesn't it? Nope. All right. There's so many copies of this, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Any okay. guesses? I found a part of a painting. It's oh, a did show. you? Okay. <laughs> Ra oh, okay, after this one, you can do it. You think this is Raphael? Yeah, is that Delacroix? Yeah, I'd say Delacroix or yeah, or David, one of the one of the two. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. David, very good. David, uh, Fred, do you want to share your photo? I'll let you. Uh, I'll stop sharing, and you can you can share. You have to give me an okay. All right, there you go. You're good to go. Let's see if we got a stumped. Ooh. Ooh. That's oh. really nice. That's uh, De Vera, <laughs> Diego Rivera, isn't it? That's right. And the name <laughs> and the name of it. You gave it away. Um and where it's located. Oh, look at the mountains way in the back here. Mexico no. City and corn, corn mill or something. That's beautiful. Here's mm -hmm. some other pieces of it. Oh wow! It, was that it? Is that's not the it's mural a, at the um, Detroit Art Museum, is it? No, but they, he does have a huge collection there. Oh, that's gorgeous! Yeah, because yeah, yeah the, the whole. Entrance to the museum is um, just huge mural. So, uh, Frida Kahlo was in that one at the yeah. bottom. These are beautiful. This is all one piece. It's all one mural, right? Yeah, it's like. Do you know what like, size? What size is this? Yeah, it's like twenty some feet high and a hundred feet long or something. It's huge. It's a fresco. Oh my god! Do you it's know how fresco. long it how long it took him to paint it? He painted it in a, one summer in a special exhibition they had in 1940 in San Francisco. Yeah. Oh. So and, much detail. Uh, mm. It's called That's great. Pan American Unity, and it's at the San Francisco City College. Oh, it was painted. Great. It was painted in panels that were portable. So think of you know oven trays, but on a big scale. That's how it was done, and then uh, they're that going to do. They're they're the uh, MoMA is going to put it on their ground floor as a temporary exhibit where you can see it from the street without going in and buying a ticket. Oh, and really? Gonna, is it is it there now? Uh, it's in process, I think. And oh, MoMA is going to pay for conserving it. The whole, you know, they're going to pay for the whole deal. Oh, nice. Anyway. Thank you. That was great. All righty. So, okay, let's go on to the next one here. Make sure my sound is on. That's Rem Rembrandt, isn't it? That's what I was thinking. Or Caravaggio? No. No? It's definitely Dutch. Let's see. I'm I'm still going to go with. Oh. Oh, Velasquez. Velasquez. Oh. oh. Wrong, wrong. All right. Ah. And go, oh, and go, and go, and go. Yeah, that yeah. one's a, iconic. Yeah. Anyone have the name of it? It's, it's kind of like the bedroom bed. or something. Is it the yellow bed or the yellow? The bedroom, the bedroom. Yeah. And he painted several versions of it. Ah, um, wow. Degas. I know that one. It's it's um, Whist. No, not Whistler. Um, It's Madam X. Yep, you got it. There's Sergeant. 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 God, that is stunning. The gown. Oh. Well, there's a story behind it too. It was is that the one where 
Initially, he painted it with the strap down. On right. The That's the story. Oh, that would have and been they, very risque. And, and, they had, and he had to later come in and fix it. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but yeah, that would have been scandalous. So racy. Not, racy. It still is, really, for that time. Oh, it's a beautiful piece. Beautiful piece, though, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah? Never mind. Oh, okay. A Turner, um, the uh, it's a, it's a, it's the name of a sh the, the something of the ship. The, the shipwreck. The name of the ship that it's. What's the name? Away. And the other, let's see. It's the death, the fight. Oh, the fighting Timurin. Timurin, yeah. That's delicate. Oh. Isn't it? Or, uh, what about Goya? Mm, well, well, there's a lot, lot of fighting going on here. Yeah. My God. I still say Delacroix. Think so? Or Goya? Is that what's another suggestion? The paint Goya. doesn't look loose enough to be Goya, but the faces have kind of a Goya. Fighting the Moors could be Spanish. Mm. Yeah. Oh, oh, Goya. Yeah. Goya. Goya, the 2nd yeah. of May, 1808. Good job, Pat. Uh -huh. <laughs> the faces looked Goya, but the horse didn't. That's what kind of threw me. Yeah, the eyes really pop. Yeah, yeah. It, they definitely have. Even on the horses, the eyes, you can really see the eyes there. Um, oh, this is uh, da, 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 da. wow! Look at the hills and the mountains in the back here. Uh, it's uh, boy, the leaves on these trees look like Spanish galleons. No, it's mm -hmm. it's it's. Oh God, I know it! I know it! I can't. there's a little it, city down here. With the harbor. little bay, yeah. little harbor there. I, Paul Rubens? No, I, it's like... I, Hans? Wait a minute. Hans? I keep thinking Bosch. Hans? Because Hans? Of all things, but it's Hans. not. All right. Time's up. Time's up. Let's see. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. oh, he gets us all the time. I know. The it's, elder. We missed that once before. We do. We I, just... All right. I I knew it. I just the name just I'm. He has stuff. Oh, there's, there's Icarus down there in the water. He crashed. Yeah. You see him? Oh, right here. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> yeah. The fall of Icarus. <laughs> yep. There he is. Splash. His, his wings gave out. <laughs> <laughs> And there's a bird right here or something sitting on the perch. And then you have a bunch of uh, sheep or something here. It's kind of subtle to be named that and you could just barely see the figure. I know. Almost <laughs> didn't even see that. It's more landscape than Icarus for sure. Yeah, I think the landscape is so distracting. You don't even see him in the water. That's funny. <laughs> Oh, Montagna by the death of Christ. The, yeah, I think it's Montagna. Yeah, I think you're right. Good yeah. job. Wow, very oh. good. Good job. The foreshortening is just very yeah, extraordinary not, there, especially for the time. And the holes in the, I just noticed the holes in the hands and the feet. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very graphic. Very graphic. It's almost, it's, it's early, very early Renaissance. Mm -hmm. 
And it's very close up, too. Clamped. 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 <laughs> this is pretty. Is, is that the woman in gold? I yeah. think so. Yeah, it is. I think. Beautiful. That was the one that was Beautiful. stolen, isn't it? Yes. Oh, was it stolen? Do you remember the yeah, Do you remember the story? story? There's actually a movie about it. Yeah. There was a movie about to, trying to retrieve it. Oh. Hmm. Excellent. Yeah, it was stolen by the Nazis, I think. Yes. Yes, yes it was. was oh, it? was it during the World War? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Portrait of a very wealthy Jewish Helen, woman. Helen Mirren starred in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I just read an article about you know uh, art uh, art theft and stuff, and they have a database of like over fifty thousand pieces of art. <laughs> That's surprising. That are that are not have, have been stolen. They can't find them. Haven't found them. And most you of have, them are in, most of them are likely in Russia, probably. in the basement of the Hermitage. Probably, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, <laughs> the Hermitage always shows up. He's stolen artworks, but that comes from the wars, you know, when we had exactly, the, uh, exactly. Did anyone watch Monuments Men? That movie, yeah, yeah. That, that was a yeah, and that was based on. There's a documentary called The Rape of Europa, and really, the movie did a good job of, uh, you know, following the documentary, and it goes it goes into the whole, the whole task of finding all this artwork that was just, you know, tucked in every nook and can nook and cranny everywhere. Uh, Netflix no, has just done a documentary, about a five-piece documentary on that theft and um, the 1970s. Stanley Gardner. In, uh, yeah, in Boston. Stanley Gardner, yeah. I saw that. I haven't looked at it, but I, I, I noticed I, that they're showing that. Like, Yeah, I saw the first one. Oh, well, check that out. I went and saw yeah, the, the gallery when is, I was in Boston. It's in Boston. Yeah, they've, huh. never, they've never recovered them. <clears throat> Hmm. Brock. Yeah, so. Is that Brock? How are we going to say Brock? Brock? They're musicians. I was going to say Picasso, but no. Well, they yeah. were kind of influenced each other, but. Yeah. They look like robots. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Yep. Three musicians. Oh, it was Picasso. Picasso. It was Picasso. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Never seen that one before. I can Oh, have you seen it? Did you see it somewhere? Did someone say they've seen this in real life? No, they uh, I don't think I've seen it in real life. Oh. And Angra. That's an illusion. Oh, the V. Did he? Portrait of Madam? Yeah, they, they painted together. Huh. Okay. Hmm. The aqueducts, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, no guesses? No guesses. <laughs> this one's got us, huh? Is, is <laughs> Do we have an error? <laughs> Give me it. Donna, is this a, a quiz that's preset, or is this one you came up with? <laughs> what do you mean a quiz preset? Oh, no, this is just something I came up with. Um, I'm just doing a, a, off of a video. So I, I don't even know who they are. So. That's what I meant. It's something you found as opposed yeah, to. Yeah, and I, I have no idea what, what, what's next what's either. Coming? Okay, that's what I meant. Um, so I can play along. <laughs> All right, I guess we'll have to see here. Get off the hook. Oh. Don't, don't, never would have gotten that. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Um, wow, look at how you can see through the veil to no, the shoulder. It, it's, could that be Vermeer? It's Van Eyck. It's Van Eyck. 
Oh. Van Eyck, huh? Yeah. It's Dutch. <laughs> I think it's at the it's... Uh, National Gallery in Washington. It's very stunning. <laughs> Uh oh. Oh, Van der Heiden. Oh, ah, well. They were hmm. similar, but Van Eyck did one very similar. Well, it's it's Dutch, so that makes sense. Yeah, that they. Well, it's um, not Dutch. It's Belgian. Belgian. Okay. Same neighborhood. <laughs> So close. Okay. Iris Bingo. Is, there we go. Purple irises. Isn't it great the composition with that one white yep. iris really leads your eye around? Mm -hmm. Makes you wonder, like, you know. When he painted it, you know, that probably was what he saw. Was that he was a maybe very lonely person, too? Maybe he ran out of blue. <laughs> yeah, really. Oh, well, it's going to be a white flower. Blue is expensive paint. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. we see. Okay. Wow. Uh, so that, is this nice. another, another Turner? Yeah. It looks very looks similar, like doesn't it? The, the way the light is and everything. It's except boy. This, this oh maybe this is the shipwreck one. There oh. was. Yeah, turn. Turner. Yep. The, his skies and water are so distinctive. Did anyone see the movie on Turner? No. Oh. It, oh. came out, it came out about five years ago. Um, what was the name? I think it was called uh, Turner. Turner, huh? Um, he was quite a character. Was he? But, uh, oh. Picasso. Uh, that's Picasso, yes. Yeah. And go sunflowers. <laughs> There's one over here, just a little white one over here. Oh, wow. Bellows. What? Bellows. George Bellows. Bellows. George Bellows. Wow, this is very uh, violent. It's a, it's a pretty famous um, boxing match. Uh, I don't know my boxers, but I'm pretty sure. Well, yep. Yeah. Stagnated Sharkies. <laughs> That's <laughs> contemporary. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Van Gogh. Portrait, yeah. Yeah, he did about 50 self portraits. I think this is one of his, looks like when he's younger. He did a bunch of them, yeah. Without beard. Couldn't afford a model. <laughs> Giotto. Uh, wait a minute. Mm, you think that's Giotto, really? Uh, I do. I saw this recently on a, uh, this guy did, did a webinar on Italian art, but the name, of course, escapes me of the painting. It's, it's huge. Um, it's in the Uffizi. This is a period when uh, baby Jesus looked like a full-size adult, but I was going to say, that is one yeah. mean looking <laughs> baby. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's, pre it's pretty famous because it's one of the first pieces where perspective has been put in. Exactly. That's yeah, what, you can, that's what yeah, you can see a little it, bit of it. Yeah. It looks like you should have a suit on. The Uffizi has like the three of them. I don't know. That baby Jesus is scaring me. <laughs> I like it's the Italian, colors. Italian. 
the detail on the. I think it's in Rome. Okay. No, it's in or Florence. Uh, Fiji's in, in Florence. Yeah, it's in the Uffizi. Huh? Giotto. Yep. Giotto. Yeah, yeah. Giotto. Yeah. Giotto. Yeah. Never heard of him. Uh, he Good did job. the uh, a lot of the. Uh, didn't he uh, do the um, he, the paintings in the in us in Assisi and the. Um, in the he was thing. he was like before, before he was, he was, he was Da Vinci before the and, and all, he was yeah he was a little before it was yeah. before the he Renaissance was, but yeah. it was the first movement he he was the first person that started moving uh, painting Towards, into three dimensional yeah and you're starting to use um, the the fact perspective that the, yeah, yeah. yeah the fact mm -hmm. that the angels are are layered mm -hmm. back to front. Right, you can yeah. see them. The others would have been strictly flat and very flat, and um, right. Yeah, yeah. And people got the, the Madonna that, that, and the child have curves that you can see. You, I, I, I used to see this in art history, and I thought it was like, oh, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, it was a an altarpiece, so you had sort of visions that it was like maybe. 15 by 20 or something like that you go in and it's more like 15 by 20 feet it's just yeah oh really oh boy his his figures always had elongated eyes also there's, if you look at some of this must have been a must have been an early an early one of his works because some of his other yeah. ones have even more realistic sort of movement and he so was also forth an too. architect he did the bell tower um mm -hmm. for the in the um it sits next to the um, Duomo in Florence. Hmm. Does right. it say, Donna, what year these artworks were made? Uh, no, it doesn't say the year. This is going to be late 13, early 14, 14. Yeah, I think. At, yeah. at least, yeah. Very old. It looks like Dolly. No, it's a I Cubist. Don't say Brock. It's a Cubist, but I'm Yeah, I was thinking Brock it. also, but I got it wrong last time. I don't know. It looks <laughs> like I don't think it's Brock. Picasso, though. I don't think so. Is this either. supposed to be an artist's palette right here? Because I'm seeing the, I think so, yeah. the colors. So. It looks yeah. a little like... So no Dolly, huh? No. Mm -mm. no, I don't think so. Oh, oh, one grief. I was going to say it looks a little like Picasso. Oh, oh there we go. Picasso, but wow. But it's, wow, but it's green. The yeah. the right, the, but I yeah. that, but I didn't think it was a self portrait. The more I looked at it, it looked like a young Picasso. Are you guys <laughs> familiar with one grief? Yeah, he was another. He was another one of the Cubas. <coughs> he, the Picasso, Gris, and Brock stuff is so hard. Unless is you really Gris, know. It. Was Gris Spanish? Uh, I think probably so. Yeah. Oh, hmm. we don't know the years here. Yeah, it doesn't have the year. Oh, Kandinsky, Kandinsky. That's, that's Kandinsky. 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 my favorite. Oh, <laughs> I, I like them too. Just very interesting. Look at the little bugs. That one's particularly one. whimsical. It's very whimsical. Some of us um, are not so whimsical. They're just geometric, but that one's really whimsical. You've got like, the uh, like Kandinsky meets Dr. Zeus. Exactly. Yes, it does yeah. look like that. You, yeah. I don't know if I've ever seen this one. I don't think I've seen this one before. Got some music notes up here. Good. It'd be nice yeah, if these are. He was part of the Bauhaus group. Mm. It'd be nice if they also revealed the date and the. Um, it would, yeah. Um, and and where what museum it's in. All right. Let's see. I think we all pretty much think it is. Oh no! Oh, spo wow. Spoiler. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh -oh. Wow. No wonder why it looked so whimsical. 
Like but, two whips ago for Kandinsky. <laughs> but that doesn't even, I mean, it doesn't remind me of a Moreau, though. I can kind of see it. I've never There's seen so this one much, before. It, it's definitely yeah, a carnival. <laughs> There's so much stuff. Well, I looked up Juan Gris. Yeah. And he was about the same time as the other Spanish painters, 80s, 1887, 1927. Yeah. And I think Moreau painted about the same time. Yeah. He but was, Miro's paintings were more, usually, they, they were more, uh, they weren't so busy. They were. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. what surprises me. Yeah, they, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, this one's very busy. So, Harlow, I'm going to look it up. See what year it was. I like Harlequin's it. car. Yeah, it's nice. All right. Okay. Too many curves for Kandinsky. <laughs> <laughs> All um, is that Enzor? Uh, I don't know. Well, wait a minute. Oh, it's. Its signature is up there in the. Oh, oh there's a signature. You can see it. Uh, <laughs> it's Krishner. Something like that. Yep. Marcella. Christine, did you have any luck with the. Uh, the That's Harlequins? what I'm looking at, but I'm oh. trying to look at the pictures and search it to see. Oh, okay, time. we'll give you a second. Okay, it's coming. This one is real confusing. I, I don't know this person. Okay, let's see what year is it. Uh, so Moreau painted that in uh, 1924 to 1925. Thank you. Does it yeah. say where it is, Where it, what museum it's in? Yeah, hold on. It's kind of interesting that they've got this, these, some of these that they've got listed as 100 great paintings of all time. Some of them, it's like... Never heard of them, yeah. <laughs> well, I just said, uh, if you're only going to pick 100, some of these are a little surprised. Oh. Um, a Blake, William Blake. Is he supposed to be an astronomer well, or something? Or looks like he's sitting on the seafloor. Looks like it does. It looks like coral. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. It looks like it's looks underwater, like almost. Yeah, yeah, like coral or something. Boy, somebody sure studied muscles. I wouldn't yes. be sitting on that coral naked. Yeah, really. Mm -hmm. That's not safe. <laughs> I, it's, I still think it's William Blake, but we'll see. Not safe at all. Nope. Hey, nope. good job. Yeah. Okay, Very I got good. That. Newton, yeah. yeah, Newton. There you go. That's why he's doing calculations. Okay, so Harlequin Carnival is hanging in the Albright Knox Art Gallery, Buffalo. Buffalo. What's the date? 1924, 1925. Yeah, it's the same period as the other one. That's why we've not seen it it's in the Buffalo Museum. Yeah. So is this typical of Blake? I'm not familiar yes. with Blake. Is that the way he painted nudes with lots of muscles? A lot of muscles? Um, he, or... didn't paint, he didn't do nudes that much, but he was also the poet. That <laughs> Most of his things are very religious. He did yeah. a lot of the um, Paradise Lost. He illustrated yeah. his own poetry also, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Lion oh, and the wow. Lion, the uh, and... Uh, Tiger, Tiger, Burning Bright. And Newton was quite religious also. It's not, that's not as typical, Blake. It, it's a little more detailed. Oh, okay. But it, it uh, it's Norman Rockwell. Um, that's yeah, Norman, Norman Rockwell, Rockwell. yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, Norman. <laughs> Beat him from what, yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We should be able to have Thanksgiving dinner this year. I know. I look at that turkey's looking good. <laughs> oh, this puppy. 
Now, I would not list that as one of the hundred great paintings of all. No. Time, but it's, it's cute. Sweet. That's sweet. The, the rug the is sheer ornate. Plus, I'm the surprised. The rug is that, nice. The I'm shoes. Look at the, the shoes. I'm surprised the dogs were in the hundred best. There's room. probably 10 or 20 sets of these hundred great paintings. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Uh, look at the shoes, the shiny little patent leather leathers. Yeah, that's that's pretty. Yeah. I don't think I go ahead and show it. I don't any think guesses. Guess, I'm gonna guess says? American, but I don't. I yeah. don't no know. guesses. All right, let's see Our who British. it is. An illustration. Oh, written. Don't know who that is. It's more of an illustration than a. Breton Riviere. Never heard. Mm. Must be French. Uh, um, oh, that's uh -oh. Marcel Duchamp's uh, new yeah. descending a staircase. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Very good. Okay, Breton Rivieri mm -hmm. is British. Oh. Mayon. Huh. Oh. Uh, this is a phobist. I can't. Um... Uh, any guesses? I, I thought I think I, 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 I thought it was I think Degas. I know who it is, but I can't think place his name. He's one of the one of the phobas. I for some reason I thought Degas, but I don't think Degas ever did anything with that much color. No, that's more. It's that's why it's it's the folk movement, which came after. It's after the impressionist, and it's part of the expressionist movement. But they did all these bright colors. Everything is very. Um, that's right. Matisse, early Matisse. Wow, Matisse. I remembered this because it's in my art history class <laughs> picture. All right, next one. Oh, Andy <laughs> Warhol. Warhol. Look at that one. <laughs> Did he do that while she was still alive? Mm. Anybody know? I don't know. Let's look it up. Yeah. Turquoise. I wonder if she ha if he had different colors of it. Like this is called turquoise. I wonder if there was a different colors. Yeah, he made a whole set of prints. Like a whole wall. When do you make like yeah. walls? Well, they were silk, they were silk screen, so it depended on yeah. what colors he ran through the screen as to how they came out. I own a war. Oh, you do? Which one? Uh, the sunset um, from the sunset series. Huh. They were yeah, all he did it. He did a lot of them. They were all one of a kind. It was the only set he did where every one of them was different. Wow. Well, she died in 62, and this is dated for 62. So it was oh. either right oh. after she died or close to it. Huh. So I he have did, it from 67. He, he did a whole bunch of them. This is just one because he did 50 images. Oh, wow. It consists of 50 images. This is one of the 50. Huh. Okay. De Kooning. William De Kooning. Is is that um British? Do you have a name? Uh, I think he was German. Mm. But he was one of the modern um his wife is in our um women of art history list. Well he was sure abstract. Yes. Yeah, yeah it was abstract. Is this is it contemporary? Yeah, uh, probably the sixties. Yeah. Did you see that sale of Basquiat that took place recently? How much did it go for? Oh, I mean, he sold like a hundred million dollars, over a hundred million dollars worth wow. of his work. Wow. Sotheby's. Nice. Mm. Mondrian? Yeah. Yeah. I went to early mode. Mm. Yep. 
Broadway Boogie Woogie. I like that's, that name. That's funny. Isn't Mondrian, isn't he French? Wasn't he French? I think so. And the, the things got even more s simpler as he went on. Well, the early piece. The interesting just, thing was to have it go into clothing and in households, how people decorated with, um, especially, um, oh, what is it? In the 50s, what is that called? Art Deco? No, no, no. no. Uh, in the in the homes, the way homes were designed oh. in the fifties. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I've seen it with clothing, especially in Paris. Not not sure on that one. I know what you mean, but I don't know what the yeah, what they call that. <laughs> Is that like a horse's head and a human head or? Hmm. I don't know. It's pretty creepy. It's <laughs> kind of very, yeah, very strange. The shoes are different though. Oh, and different pants, just different hoses. No idea. <laughs> mm. It's kind of weird looking. Oh. oh. Oh, Francis Bacon, huh? Okay, the fifties. Yeah, I mean, I've never seen it before, but it, it, the face is definitely Bacon. The fifties architecture is mid-century modern. Ah, mid-century <laughs> modern. Okay, and that's why I've seen houses with Mondrian type of. Um, Actually, sixties is more mid-century modern. But Lucian Freud, I wonder. if that's related to Freud. Ooh, yeah, this is a uh, very strange. <laughs> I didn't know. If, is this Francis Bacon, the philosopher, also did art? Anybody know? No, it's not the. It, I don't. It's not the philosopher, but it's a. It is the same. They are the same. Oh, Pat, were you going to say something? You said they are the same? I, I just, no, I was questioning, are they oh. the same person? Francis. Okay, so I've come up with Francis Bacon, British painter. Mm -hmm. Irish-born British painter, 1909-1992. Uh, oh, thank you, Christine. Got my Wikipedia right here. You got, you got to go. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, I've seen that. Um, yeah, I think, okay, maybe we're going to finally hit a Brock. You <laughs> think this is a Brock? Could be. You thinking this is the one? Could be. Let's see. Yeah. There you go. Yes. Yay. Nice. Man with the guitar. She wins the gold star. Finally. <laughs> well, we've managed to have every Cubist so far, so... So was Brock, is that French or German or, you know? I'd be either French or Spanish, I think. Oh, boy, this one, I have no idea. It looks like somebody imitating Mondrian. Could that be Ken? It, Kandinsky, is that what you're thinking could, of? Could, could, could Kandinsky ever do any straight stuff? It's got kind of the musical movement of Kandinsky, but I've never seen this piece before, so. Hmm. Let's see. I oh, no. Never heard of that. Never, never, heard, of I've never heard of him. Sub Suprematist comp composition. Wow. Yeah, it's nice colors. I'm curious, <laughs> as everyone else's think, does the um um the stop go go right across the print on the bottom for everyone else? Yeah, it does. Okay. Wow. Jasper Johns. Oh. Huh? Let's see. Well, I just looked up Malevich. Oh, you got it. Flag. <laughs> hey, Christine? The last one, Malevich, Russian. Um, yeah. 19, I mean, 1879 to 1935. Oh. 
I was expecting this one to have a little bit more of a title. <laughs> Just flag. Jasper Johns has got to be American. And anybody know what time period he painted? He was um, during the Warhol and um, mm. oh, 60s. The pop art during the pop art period. 60s, 70s. 60s. Uh, this pop art was the 70s. There are 48 stars in the flag, so it had to be before um, Alaska Nin and Hawaii. 1958. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Good catch. <laughs> Mm. Mm. Uh, I'm guessing I think it looks French. That or, or I think it's Russian. Really? Mm. It's it's someone who painted at the same time that Klimp was painting, but not it was not Klimp, but uh, huh. Here we give up, Donna. Show us. <laughs> My problem is Sheila. I, I've got the Egan. Sheila. Uh, yeah, he was. He was uh, like Czech or something. He was Czech, wasn't he? Wasn't he Czech or, or uh, Austrian? Austrian. Yeah. Or, it wasn't. It wasn't uh, German or Russian. I mm. think he was Austrian. He and he and um, Klimt were close. He was a little bit behind. A little bit younger than Klimt, but they knew each other. Um, I saw a show of theirs in um, in Prague. But, but Klimt, oh, okay, yeah, it says he's he was Austrian. Yeah, he was a protege of Klimt. Yeah, yeah. So detail. Ooh. Klimt went way beyond him. That's for sure, as far as detail. Yeah. I, I mm. saw the Klimt exhibit in uh, San Francisco at the De Young. Was amazing. Actually, Sheely was younger than Klimt, so he was loosening things up even more. Mm. Mm. Oh, okay. I mean, he was more, his stuff was more contemporary than Klimt's. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for all your input and discussion. Was this fun. was great. Donna, was thanks great. a million. What's next that we haven't seen yet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. We keep coming up with things. Um, we got women in art history. Yeah, we've been doing women with art history. We keep finding more and more, too. So we'll probably be uh, just going through the list, I think, at this point. Uh, there's so many of them. Uh, so we have the Art History 101, Major Periods and Movements. We have the Colorful World of Chihuly, uh, Women in Art History. There's part one and part two, Leonardo da Vinci. We're going to start a class next week on an intro to digital art, if anyone's interested in that. And we're going to have, um, oh, I think... Uh, uh, let's see. I guess he left. Fred left. Tomorrow, Fred's going to do a demo for us on using Procreate on your iPad during the top drawing apps class. If you want to come in tomorrow for that. Donna? And, yep. Joy? Um, yeah, that was a great class. I loved it. How do I do a survey? I mean, they have surveys, right? Yes, yes. At the end of the class, you're going to get an email. So go ahead and uh, put your feedback in and what you think about the class. And if you have any other class ideas, uh, feel free to put them in that feedback form. And you can always invite friends uh, through on the desktop. There's an invite a friend button you can put press on or on your mobile. You can invite them through email or through Facebook. And we have the help at getsetup.io email address. It's good for getting support questions answered. If you have a um, if you want to host an interest group, you know, uh, Melinda, hello, art history. <laughs> <laughs> Hit me up, Melinda. Maybe we yeah. can do something. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, if you want to host an interest group or anything like that, you know, if you, um, if you ha let us know uh, just by emailing help at getsetup.io. Actually, I'm going, to be helping, I am going to be helping Russ in a week or two do one on home exchange. Oh, okay. Great. All right. Well, if you're ready to do some art stuff, we could have you do some art things, too. Melinda, who's your favorite artist or what period? You know, I, I have so many in, you know, it's kind of like. Um, it's hard to pick a favorite. I, I, do, I mean, I, ones like Van Eyck's and Vermeer's and are, are so special because there's so few of them. So every time you get to see one um, around the world, it's, you know, pretty neat. And they. Yeah. They were sort of unique, um, but um, I there's hardly a, I, I'm not as into the modern 
as as much as I am um, impressionist and before, but it, you know, it depends. But it is interesting how um, uh, I tell you, a museum that is surprising in this country is the Detroit Museum of Art. Yeah, oh, I was just stunned. I mean, that be I, you're used to the National Gallery and the Met and the Chicago Art Institute as far as being the three biggies and as far as having stuff that's, you know, national, internationally famous. But the, the Detroit Art Museum was just stunned to me. And it, oh. I'm, but it's because of back of the period during where all the um, um, automotive um, titans had money and, um, the, the oh, amount yeah. of art they collected, I mean, they have got, um, in addition to having a huge amount of art going all the way back to medieval, they, they've even got a Van Eyck, which is amazing, but oh. uh, also a huge collection of furniture and decorative art that's excellent. But yeah, if you're hmm. ever in Detroit, be sure to go to that art museum. You'll just be s surprised at what, oh. what they have there. Donna, did yep. you get to see the girl with the pearl earring when it was at the De Young? Yes, oh, I did see it. Yes, I saw that it um, in Holland in, in its museum, and um, it's known was, as the Dutch um, Mona Lisa. But yeah, mm. it's it's truly special. And right across yes. the room from it, she faces the goldfinch. Oh, wow! <laughs> yeah. And oh, uh, both had movies about them, isn't it? Right, so many books and movies. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And in this, in the same room is um, um, is Vermeer's um, view of of Delft, which one of his few landscapes. Yeah. But um, and oh, and the what the cool thing was, Delft actually got. Um, or Delft doesn't have many, even though that's where he painted. They don't have. I don't think any of his work. But they, when I was in Delft, they had a the Delft Museum had a the, the painting that's the, the the street it's a street scene with a doorway and there was been a big long thing of trying to figure out where that was you know painted in Delft mm -hmm. and uh, I mean for centuries they've been trying to figure it out and they think they finally figured it out with the, where it might have been of course the building's long gone mm -hmm. but um it was a whole um a whole uh, what do you call it exhibition that was all around that that painting and maps and all it was very fascinating uh, mm. but to, and the other thing was i happened to see a vermeer show in dublin which was one of the biggest um vermeer shows where they had gathered vermeers from all over the world in one mm. place and then shown them with other wow. dutch paintings of that same period and it was interesting i was in i guess it wasn't very crowded. I was there and the guard came over and, and pointed to this little man that was in the room with me. He said, um, that's the president of Ireland. And it was just like, <laughs> you know, and he's like to us, it's like you'd never see, you know, the president in an art museum in the same room you are without a lot of security or anything like that. So that was kind of, that was kind of cool. And, like, but, and, yeah, he, and was, he's standing there and telling people too. <laughs> <laughs> the guard, the guard, yeah, the guard is telling, "Hey, you know, it's here." <laughs> but they, um, yeah, that was kind of cool. But they had, um, I guess, had gotten two pieces from the National Gallery, and they had gotten um, several of the pieces from the um, Rights Museum that were missing when I was at the Rights Museum looking because they had moved them. They'd gone to Dublin. Wow, but that was an unusual thing to have gotten that many Vermeers in one under one roof. I'm surprised they, I'm surprised they moved them all. There are 35 or 38 altogether. I, I think about that. And this one had, this show probably had about 20 of them. And then, like I said, they, they hung That's a lot. With, yeah, it was. I mean, I, it, they hung risky. With, <laughs> with similar paintings, you know, the genre of Dutch mm -hmm. yeah. that showed, but uh, also showing how the mirrors were different. But yeah, it was a, a show that was, um, put together, but it, yeah, I, um, yeah, I was pretty, it had just come when I happened to be there. So I was um, yeah. well excited to be able to get tickets for it. Very nice. Lucky. Very lucky. Very lucky.
Donna All thanks right. a million. We're Everyone, keeping over time. Thank you. That's yeah. okay. It's nice but, having these discussions, everyone. Enjoy your evening and your evening. weekend. Thank Are your you, friends. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Have a great thanks. have a great weekend. We'll see you have next time. Have a good, time. Art, have a good weekend. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> uh, Donna? Yeah. If you have your if you want to put your email on the um chat. Sure. I'll I don't know when or what, but yeah, I mean, I'm willing to work with you on something if you want. Sure, I'll put in the, uh... let's see, I don't know that I can find the chat. Oh, yeah, here. in the chat, I just DM'd you. <clears throat> yeah, that would be nice. Okay. All Have right, sounds evening. good. Have a nice <laughs> evening. Have a good evening, everyone. Bye -bye. Take care. Bye-bye.